Hello and welcome to Nick's Knack for Neologisms, episode 21, where we define and discuss the most amazing words in the English language. Last episode, we covered chicanery, maverick, empirical, and obdurate. And in this episode, we're covering banal, dichotomy, venerate, and fawning. So let's get on to our first word, which is banal. Some pronounce it banal, banal, whatever. There's a bunch of different pronunciations. It doesn't really matter. I like banal, so I go with banal. Banal is an adjective. It's spelled B-A-N-A-L. It's phonetic banal. B-A-N-A-L. And it means devoid of freshness or originality. Hackneyed. Trite. Devoid of freshness or originality. Lacking originality. If something is banal, it's boring, it's not new, maybe you've heard it before, it's nothing great. You're just like, all right, this is boring. This is trite. This is banal. We've already seen it. Commonplace, stale, unoriginal. I'd say those are all synonyms for banal. So the way that we can remember this, I went on to mnemonicdictionary.com and a user on there suggested this way to remember it. So think of banal, B-A-N-A-L, as a way to ban all movies that are boring. They're too banal to watch, so we should ban them all. Banal. Hopefully that helps you remember it. I think it's kind of a clever way. Banal. Ban all. We don't, we don't want to see things we've already seen before, so ban it. Banal. Because the movie's plot was banal, we knew exactly how the film would end. Filled with repetitive tasks, Sally's job can only be described as banal. Banal. You know, I used to work at FedEx, hucking packages and delivering packages and all that. And for a while, I was a package handler there, and that was a very banal job. Very repetitive, very monotonous, lackluster, very lackluster. Just sitting there hucking boxes back and forth while talking a bunch of crap to my coworkers. That's pretty much all we did. Talk a bunch of, it's like a fraternity there. FedEx, FedEx, the fraternity is what I called it. Just talk smack to each other while throwing boxes onto a belt, on a conveyor belt. Good times. Professor Ham's lectures are so banal, they cause me to fall asleep. These are all were, uh, these are all sentences that I got from words in a sentence.com. Platitudes, my friend, are those things repeated so often they have become banal. You guys remember platitudes? We covered that a few episodes back. Yeah, platitudes. How can one enjoy banal romance novels when they are so predictable? Banal romance novels. Ugh, how can you how can you enjoy romance novels, period, you guys? Let's be honest, right? Banal? Ro- I mean, romance novels. Never. Actually, no, maybe I have read a romance novel. I read Fifty Shades of Grey. Does that count? Yeah, I read it. Okay. I thought the writing was horrible. No offense to the author, but I thought her writing was horrible. I thought the vocab in the book was freaking weird. Like, you know when people just use a thesaurus to find a big word to fill in for another word? That's how I felt when I was reading that book. And as a word nerd, I mean, it was kind of obvious to me. But I thought the plot was pretty cool. I kept reading it, and I thought it was a page turner. All right, admittedly. So if that's a romance novel I've read, I've read a romance novel. And it was not banal. I thought it was quite original. But then again, I don't know because I don't read romance novels. I used to work work in a bookstore and they used to sell romance novels all the time. Who's that author? There's an author. God, everyone picked up her books. Oh, I'm forgetting her name. They just look, they all have these like cheesy looking covers on them. Anyhow, that's banal, you guys. Banal, lacking originality, B-A-N-A-L, devoid of freshness. Devoid, I love that. Devoid of freshness or originality. Banal. All right, let's move on to our next word, which is dichotomy. This is a great word. You guys might know this word. I feel like dichotomy is kind of more of a popular word, more or less. Maybe you don't know. It's a good word, though. I'm pretty sure it'll pop up in like a GRE or something like that. So dichotomy is a good word to know. It is spelled D-I-C-H-O-T-O-M-Y, dichotomy, D-I-C-H-O-T-O-M-Y, dichotomy. It's a noun. And it means division into two parts, kinds, etc. Subdivision into halves or pairs. Uh, I think it goes by this definition, though, more. There's a second definition. Division into two mutually exclusive, opposed, or contradictory groups. A dichotomy. So it's like you you got two different parts that are mutually opposed. They're entirely different from one another. That's what a dichotomy is. 
You might have a dichotomy between your thought and action. You're thinking, oh, I should do this, but instead I do this. It happens to me all the time. And then you know what happens? Uh, we know what happens or you know what follows a, di- a dichotomy between thought and action? I will tell you, folks, regret, deep regret and shame. <laughs> I'm trying to think of something lately that happened to me where I was like, I should do this and I did this instead, but I can't think of anything. But I'm sure in my younger years, there was lots of dichotomy between my thought and and action. But now, because my prefrontal cortex is probably fully developed, I'm 32, I think there's less dichotomy between my thought and action. So yeah. So on mnemonicdictionary.com, a user suggests we remember dichotomy as thinking as die, which we know means two, like, I don't know, dice, what else is in die? I don't know, just the the prefix di we know means two, right? I don't know why I can't come up with more words starting with di. Divide, if you're dividing something, you're breaking it up into two. A division is usually a breakup of, of, of two. I don't know, whatever you guys. All right, so they think, or this person, this user thinks, you think of die plus cut, like dichotomy, a dichotomy. You're cutting things into two halves or two parts. That was really clever. I wish these users had names, so I just didn't have to say, oh, this user. I mean, they've got weird usernames, but they're quite, yeah, they're just bizarre. I'm not going to mention their usernames, but it'd be nice to give them credit, you know, for these creative ideas. His dichotomy of heaven and hell became an excellent essay on the contrast between paradise and eternal suffering. Ooh, that's a good one. These are on uh, wordsinasentence.com. Nature or nurture is a dichotomy which has long been debated by scholars. Yes, indeed. Nature or nurture. The main highlight of his, of his mural is the visual dichotomy illustrating the difference between the moon and the sun. Oh, that looks nice. I have this, this imagery of this, this mural with kind of like blue shades of blue and, and really bright blueness. And I can't think of any other words that go with blue. And then on the other side of the mural, you've got this brilliant yellow and orange. I don't know what this guy's mural is, but I think it's a good dichotomy between the moon and the sun. In his play, the writer dramatizes the dichotomy of conflicting emotions felt by a man torn between two women. Oh, that poor guy. The huge dichotomy between the rich and the poor is one factor which separates the country. With a dichotomous track record, the boxers seem to either win greatly or lose horribly. Interesting. Dichotomous track record. All right. Dividing the small pizza in a dichotomous pattern, the chef made the pie perfect for two. Awesome. <clears throat> those are really good examples of dichotomy. I always wonder who writes those. Maybe someone who works for wordsinasentence.com, or maybe it has some sort of algorithm that searches the internet for those sentences. I haven't really Googled those sentences to see if they come up anywhere else, but I like them. Those are really good. All right, let's move on to our next word, which is venerate. It's a good word. I like venerate. It's a verb. It's spelled V-E-N-E-R-A-T-E. Definitely phonetic. Venerate. V-E-N-E-R-A-T-E. Venerate. To regard or treat with reverence. Revere. So if you're venerating something, you're kind of looking at it with maybe some awe and respect. Right? Awe and respect. My buddy and I, We were going on a hike here in Colorado. This was like a month or two ago. And it was kind of a banal hike, all right? I'm not a, you know, I'm not a snob when it comes to my hikes. But this hike just, there wasn't anything too amazing. I love hiking and I loved the hike. And even when it wasn't amazing, I was enjoying it. But it wasn't, at least visually, there wasn't anything visually appealing about the hike. We're just going up. we got trees on both of our sides. We're having a conversation. And I don't know. There was kind of cloudy out. It wasn't, it wasn't that spectacular. And then all of a sudden, maybe we're two hours into the hike, we're kind of coming up on this hill and we get to the top of this hill. It's not the, it's not the peak, right? It's just a hill in this hike. And boom, the trees disappear on our left and our right. And we're, our faces are just smashed against this beautiful rock, this beautiful mountain before us. I mean, it was incredible incredible. It was just, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. It was, it was beautiful. And I would say in that moment, I was venerating those mountains. I mean, they were majestic. They were ornate that all these different colors and they came out of nowhere and they must've only been, all right, they were probably, probably 500 yards away, but because they were so big 
it's like you could almost touch them. It was this weird experience, very weird. Experience. And we were just, our conversation stopped. We both were kind of like, what the, what, holy, where did these come from? This hike was ugly up until now. And now we've got these venerable mountains in front of us. Just, man, they were awe-inspiring, beautiful mountains. If you guys have a chance to come out to Colorado, just do any, any hike out here is going to be a good hike. I go hiking usually at least once or twice a month, except when the weather gets cold. But when it's nice and sunny, oh, I'm addicted to hiking. It's just, man, it's amazing. So those those mountains, I would say, were venerable, absolutely venerable. It just commanded awe and respect. When you saw them, I think anyone would have that that same experience. Venerable. All right, so on Monic Dictionary, this user suggested we think of venerable. Actually, no, wait, this is my idea. All right, kind of going off of this user. So think of, you got venerate, right? V-E-N-E-R-A-T. You got that rate at the end. Then you have vena, which almost sounds like Bena, you know, like the prefix, ben, like benevolent or beneficent or beneficiary or whatever, B-E-N-E, which means good. So if you're rating something good, you're respecting it. Maybe you're holding it in awe, venerate. It's a bit of a stretch, you guys. I know. It's all I could come up with, venerate. So you're rating something good, vena, bena, venerate, venerate, rating something good to regard or treat with reverence, revere. The Bible says we should venerate our parents and our elders. The town plans to venerate the former president by naming a street after him. These are all words in a sentence.com. The Pope is a venerable leader who is recognized for his commitment to helping others. Harold has been on, Harold has been on the staff at the hotel for 60 years and is recognized as a venerable part of the organization. Yeah. 60 years. Harold has been on the staff of a hotel for 60 years. Maybe he was working since he was 15 or 20. So that, that dude's old, man. He's got to be at least 75, 80, right? Yeah, he's an elder. We tend to, we tend to hold uh, elders in respect and a little bit of awe, right? To have to go through the world, live it for 80 years. Yeah, it's venerable. It's quite venerable. Surprisingly, the venerable general was held in high regard not only by his troops, but also by his enemies. Wow. That is quite the venerable general. Venerable. It's a good word. Venerate. You guys have anyone in your life that you venerate? Think about it. Who do you venerate in your life? I think we have everyone who we kind of venerate here and there. Or who we somewhat, I guess you could consider, maybe if you have an idol, you probably venerate them. I used to venerate Magic Johnson growing up. He used to play a lot of basketball. I loved watching Magic Johnson. Thought he was an unselfish. Couldn't stand Michael Jordan. You know what? Thank you, Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan is not the GOAT. He's not the greatest player of all time, you guys. I love Magic Johnson. He used to love his pass, his passing and his unselfishness on the court. He saw the court really well. I venerated Magic Johnson. Thought he was an amazing basketball player. Yeah, that's venerable. All right, let's move on to our next word, which is fawning. F-A-W-N-I-N-G. It's a verb. Fawning. F-A-W-N-I-N-G. Fawning. Verb. To seek notice or favor by servile demeanor. Ooh, that's a good word. To seek notice or favor by servile demeanor. Or to behave affectionately like a dog. Fawning. Fawning, to seek notice or serve or, or favor by servile demeanor. Fawning. So when you hear fawning, I usually just think of, for whatever reason, when I, when I hear the word fawning or see the word fawning, I think of a peasant down on one knee in front of his king begging him. I don't know why I have that imagery in my head, but that's what I, that's what I see. I see this peasant fawning over the king, right? And maybe there's a little bit of flattery in there. It's like this slavish devotion to someone. Someone You ever met someone who's kind of fawning? They're just overly nice and not in a weird way. Usually, usually you don't see fawning used mischievously or used in such a way that someone's trying to manipulate another person. It's just genuine behavior by another person. They're really nice. They're kind of flattering, but it's not false flattery fawning. They're fawning over someone. And a fawn, as you guys might know, is a young deer. And if you think about a young deer, for some reason, if you anthropomorphize a deer, if you take a deer and kind of put them into a human form, don't you think a deer would sort of have a fawning personality? Don't you? I mean, they're, they're, they're freaking prey, right? They got to be nice to people. They got to be obsequious, slavish. 
They got to be down on one knee and, and being nice to all their potential predators, fawning. Toady, truckle, flatter, kowtow. These are all fun, fun synonyms of fawning, words that we might cover in another podcast. Fawning. Okay, here's a cool way a mnemonic dictionary that someone came up with to remember fawning. Fawning, it almost sounds like fanning, right? Oh, let me come over and fawn you. I'm going to fawn you with my fawn. Fawning, it sounds like a fan. So think of a fan that's constantly fanning someone, keeping them cool, right? And wait, how did this work? Oh boy. Kind of like, I don't know, you're trying to please somebody, right? If you're fanning someone, you're trying to please them. You're trying to cool them off. I think that's where they were going. It made more sense when I wrote it down. Now I'm reading, I'm like, what the heck did I just write? Fanning, yeah. Hopefully hopefully you guys can make some sort of connection there between fanning and fawning, all right? You know, I think of those people back in the ancient times, medieval times, who used to fan people. I don't even know if that happened, all right? I saw it in a movie, and somehow when you watch a movie when you're a kid or whatever, even now, I think you watch a movie and it subtly, some of those things you see subtly make their way into their, your subconscious, and then you start taking them as fact. I don't really know if people fan people back in the day, but I imagine because they didn't have air conditioning, they must, they must have had a, some way to cool off, you know, throwing water on people or fawning them. Maybe the peasants were in there fawning the, the king with their fans. Oh boy, this is just getting crazy. Even the female reporters were smiling wildly and fawning over the handsome actor. Wordsinasentence.com. Don't be persuaded by his glib. He's fawning over you because you have the power to promote him. The beauty contestants are always fawning over the male judges. Since I am happily married, I do not like to have men fawning over me. I don't know if that's true, babe. I think we all like a little attention, right? Married or not married, in a relationship or not in a relationship, it feels good to have attention from, you know, those who you find attractive. Because Larry really wants a promotion, he spends a great deal of time fawning over his boss. Jane hates Laura, so everyone was surprised when she made a fawning tribute during Laura's going away party. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Why do you think Jane was fawning over Laura as she was leaving? Huh? What do you think, Jane? Now, that would be kind of a manipulative, perhaps manipulative use of the word fawning. Why would Jane be fawning over Laura even though she hated Laura? Hmm. She must have had something to gain from Laura, right? Something that she wanted from Laura maybe before she left or who knows? Maybe she wanted other people to think that she and Laura got along well when they actually didn't. I don't know. Have to use our imagination there and come up with a a reason for that. All right. I think that wraps it up for our episode. Four interesting words, banal, dichotomy, venerate, and fawning. Let's go through the four words and see if we can remember the mnemonic, or remember the definition, or as I said in our last podcast, which I think I'm going to start saying this more because I like this better. See if we can remember some loose associations for these words, and that'll kind of trigger us in the right or or send us in the right direction for what the definition of the word means. Right, but now, but now, do you guys remember the way we were going to remember this? I'll I'll, I'll refresh your memory because honestly, I, I had already forgotten. But now we thought banning all movies because why? Why do we want to ban all movies? But now. They lacked something. They were devoid of something. Yes, they lacked originality. They were devoid of freshness. Start saying that, by the way. Just start telling people they're just, you know, what you just said was devoid of freshness. <laughs> Such a funny, man, I want, I want to know who comes up with these things for the dictionary. Oh, it's devoid of freshness, my friend. Banal, yes, commonplace, stale, boring, unoriginal. That's what banal means. All right, how about our next word? Dichotomy. Dichotomy. And our mnemonic was dichotomy, dichotomy, dichotomy was our was our mnemonic was our mnemonic. What does dichotomy mean? Good, breaking things into two parts, or breaking things into parts that are mutually exclusive. Dichotomy. Dichotomy. That word was used a lot by my philosophy professors. They love to use that word for whatever reason. So. Yes, dichotomy. All right, our next word was venerate. Venerate. How do we remember venerate? Man, I'm just drawing a blank on our mnemonics. Oh, okay, I remember now. Venerate, we thought of as venerate, like with a B, like good rating, rating something good. Venerate. 
Things that are venerable are what? Things that are venerable are what? If they're venerable, it means they are deserving of respect, of awe, of reverence, to be revered. Those venerable mountains that we spoke of, that I spoke of during our hike. Boom. God, those were just beautiful mountains. Venerate. To regard or treat with reverence. Revere. An idol is someone who is venerable. Usually. Hopefully. Hopefully your idols are venerable. And our last word was fawning. F-A-W-N-I-N-G. Fawning. What does fawning mean? What's our mnemonic? We talked about the fan, right? Fanning, fawning. Going to be fawning the king. Some loose associations we could think of. I don't know. When I think of loose associations, I kind of have imagery, images that come up into my head. I think of that peasant down on one knee, right? Fawning over the king. Yeah. To seek notice or favor by servile demeanor, right? To seek notice or favor by servile demeanor. Fawning. The peasant fawning over the king. All right, that wraps it up for Nick Snack for Neologisms, episode 21, but now dichotomy, venerate, and fawning. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Please leave me a review on iTunes if you haven't. It lets me know how I'm doing, and it also helps bring more people to the podcast, or so I think. And if you've enjoyed the podcast, please consider donating to nicksnackforneologisms.com. You can visit my website there. Just Google that. I don't know. It's one big word. So you might find my website easier if you just Google it and then you can click that little donate button. It'll bring you to PayPal. I accept donations from a penny all the way up to $1 million. So please consider donating and I hope you guys have enjoyed the podcast and I will see you on episode 22. Bye-bye.